first step toward a professional haircut is to have your implements in good repair and in a sanitary condition at all times. The Yoyet clamp can be used very successfully for parting, blocking, and holding the hair. For wet hair shaping, the razor with a guard is preferred. The following hand positions will help you develop skill and accuracy. The exposed blade should be directed away from you during tapering so that the hair strand goes over the cutting blade before coming in contact with the guard. The various hand positions determine the amount of taper you may achieve for different styling effects. The changing of your blade frequently is very important. This can be done rapidly and makes the hair shaping much easier. Your scissor has one movable blade which is on the thumb side. The hand should be stationary at all times with only the thumb moving. You will note on the thinning shear there is one serrated blade and one movable blade. Here again the holding of the instrument is very important. We control it while combing the hair at the same time. Next is our dry hair shaping and thinning with scissors and tapering shears. We will demonstrate this method with effilating, slithering, and tapering techniques. For dry hair cutting, we can drape with a Sanex strip and a regular hair cloth. This is very practical and sanitary and can be achieved very quickly, giving added protection to our patron. Our blocking is very similar to the wet hair shaping. We have blocked off from ear to ear and from the forehead center down the entire back. We have our top section, medial section, and our guideline, which extends around the entire head. The reason for so many partings here is for speed and accuracy. It is much easier to first block the hair properly than to have to do it during the process of hair cutting. Now start at the nape line. You will note we are giving a tapering movement because the hair is quite heavy and we want to taper it on the ends because of the particular texture of this model's hair. Thin the hair so that it will not be too heavy on the neckline. Now graduate around to the ear line, leaving the hair slightly below the ear lobe. You will note here the effilating movement which produces the tapered ends which are so necessary for soft coiffures. Comb and check the hair at regular intervals to make sure there is not too much bulk at the nape line. If you find too much bulk, you may taper the ends with your tapering shears slightly. Just the very ends are all we want to taper to ensure softness at the nape. Now this is used on a very heavy head of hair. Now after the guideline is completed and cut to the desired length, we start from our left again. And we move from the left, holding our sections vertical and using the guideline as a guide. We graduate the hair upward at a 45 degree angle, holding the hair taut, cutting the bottom sections first and graduating to the contour of the head. You will again note the slithering movement which we call effilating the hair. This achieves the tapering we so much desire on this heavy hair which we are working with today. Take smaller sections of the vertical partings approximately one half inch in width. This gives you better control and more perfection in this haircut. When you take larger sections you cannot control the hair properly between the index and medial fingers. Always hold the hair taut from the head with a good gradation upward the left hand automatically contouring the head. 
you will achieve this movement through practice and experience. As we move across the center section and continue the same movement, we work from the left to the right, always maintaining the same amount of slithering movement for the soft ends that are required. The hair may be dampened slightly after you have your side medial sections finished. You can check them as you graduate with your hair cutting. The top section is left slightly longer. However, your guideline must graduate uniformly with the shape of the head. You still use the medial guideline here as your guide, leaving the top hair slightly longer and graduating to the contour of the head. On the top, also it is important that you use an extensive slithering movement. Now on the right hand crown section, the hair is held slightly backward and the same slithering movement is used on the entire section. Always remember to cut from the bottom strand first because this is the taut part and you must graduate your hand as you are cutting. The hair will become taut as you graduate your hand upward. At the side, you may use the diagonal parting again for our basic haircut, but still use a slithering movement so that the ends are tapered and are not too blunt and coarse looking. Then mold the hair, check for correct length, and if there are any long ends, remove them at this time. Now we are ready for the bang section. In our basic haircut, the bang is slithered extensively because we anticipate a slightly feathered bang effect here. Therefore, the hair must be tapered on the ends to have that softness that is required for this nice casual bang. Work back to the crown section and blend the crown with the bang using a slithering, contouring movement, removing the bulk which may interfere with the soft bouffant bang line. Repeat the same procedure on the left hand side, working from the front toward the back to achieve accuracy and proper blending with the medial section. With the heavy hair, it is very important that you use an extensive taper. Here we are going to demonstrate a thinning action, staying away from the scalp at least one inch and graduating out toward the ends of the hair. Note that the top section is blocked off so that we are never cutting the top strand of hair. Confine your thinning primarily to the medial part of the strands, staying away from the scalp so that we have no short ends at the scalp. Now this is done with our tapering shears. Go around the entire head and note how the shear is laying practically flat.
This is the horizontal method of tapering, still staying away from the scalp one inch and graduating down to the ends of the hair. This can be achieved when the hair is really bulky. However, we prefer the vertical method of thinning. Now another method of thinning can be achieved with the points of the shears. This requires much skill and experience. We warn you to stay away from the scalp at least one inch. We can achieve thinning very effectively with this method. Now another method of thinning is with a slithering movement from the movable blade of the shear, back combing and taking off some of the hair at the same time. Now still another method of thinning is back combing with your comb and then slithering the ends to remove bulk. This can be used where the hair is not so heavy and we don't desire a great deal of thinning. We back comb the hair first and then thin the hair from the ends primarily. Now this movement is blunt cutting. The hair must be held straight out from the head and then removed following the contour of the head. You will note how the fingers are bent slightly to conform to the shape of the head. The ends of the hair are cut off very bluntly. When you have completed the haircut, dampen the hair thoroughly and check through the haircut to make sure that there are no irregular ends. Then comb the hair downward. Check the hair, noting that there is no bluntness to the hair and that each section blends perfectly. This will make your patron's hair easily managed, easily styled, and will bring your patron back for future haircuts and styles. Now if she isn't going to have a shampoo and wave, the hair must be dressed suitably for her to leave the salon. Something in this manner. However, we should encourage a set and comb out after a cut. We applied a quick, casual set pattern achieved with rollers and curls, forming a very practical salon style, one she will be able to brush very easily and maintain nicely herself. Observe that the lines and direction of this set are directly related to the line and movement of the finished comb out. You will note the softness on the bang that results from our tapered cut. Tapering was used extensively here. Observe the tapering on the crown which graduates through various levels down to the nape line. Note the softness we have achieved with our slithering movements and the airy and wispy effect of the hair on top. Regardless of which method you prefer, razor or scissor cutting, you must perfect your skill with them to achieve the right amount of taper and proper amount of slithering to remove the necessary bulk from the hair. You have seen the correct procedures. Now work slowly at first and carefully. Skill and speed come through practice. You will gain perfection in your work through experience. A haircut skillfully done and correctly related to the style is basic for lasting hair beauty. And she will thank you.